Gothic lettering is everywhere now. Everyone sort of loves it. And I've been doing Gothic calligraphy for quite some time. In fact, when I was in primary school, it was the first calligraphy I was ever taught. Gothic lettering was also a calligraphy that Steve Jobs loved and he could actually do. And that's the reason why we have great typography inside of computers today. And if you want to hear more about that story, I'm sure there's more stories about that online. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a rundown on Gothic calligraphy and how you can do it, whether it's vectored or whether it's in bitmap or just an image. So I've got an Apple Pencil on an iPad. You don't need this. You can just use any old piece of paper and you can even string two pieces of pencils or two pencils together like this. And what will happen is it will create the same effect. Or you can get yourself a parallel pilot pen. That's like a Gothic italic pen. So the brushes I'm using in my iPad is my Gothic set, which you can download online. I'll leave a link in the description inside of Procreate and inside of Vectinator we're going to be creating a brush and Vectinator is a completely free app for any designers and now they've even introduced the new brush feature which allows you to create and edit brushes inside of it. Okay so gothic lettering what do you do to practice? Well the first thing is let's have a look at the brush or the pen that we'll be using. If we look inside the pen and we start looking around anytime I go from top down it sort of creates it's got like this 45 degree degree angle on it. So normally when you're using a real parallel pen, you have to have the angle yourself. You do the angle yourself, which is very difficult to do if you're first starting out. Whereas with my brushes here, you can see that the angle is always there. It doesn't matter what angle your pencil is at. The angle in the brush will always be there. If you wanted to create your own, this is what it looks like. If you wanted to have a look at the grain and the shape, it's just a simple shape at a 45 degree angle. So what we want to do is get a grid up in your Procreate first of all, and follow along with me if you like. This is sort of like the Bob Ross of calligraphy. I'm gonna get a pencil here, and I'm just gonna create a couple of lines. I'm gonna create a new layer up here. I'm gonna create a couple of lines like this, and then I'm gonna duplicate that layer. I'm gonna move this layer that's duplicated down. I'm gonna make sure I've got magnets on just to keep that nice. Move that down, and then we're gonna do the same again, move it down again, around about so. Until we get to the first one, I'm gonna bring the first one down ever so slightly. This is the ascender height, I have it about there. Then I'm gonna merge all these together, change the opacity down, and now we have our grid or our guides. Go to the Gothic brush set, and you can choose any of these, but I would suggest choosing the uh, just the normal gothic one there, which is nice, it's got a cool texture on it. Now, the first thing you've got to learn about gothic lettering is the components. Every single letter is made up of it components. By that, I mean, if I wanted to draw the letter I or create the letter I, it would go something like this. There's many different ways you can do it, but if we're doing the classic way, it's a bit different. This is more of a minimal, modern way. But this I here that I'm just drawing is made up of like three shapes. This eye is made up of this stroke, this stroke, and this stroke. And the brush stroke that we go for is this way, down, and this way. Now, the reason why we do that is because it allows us to have like these serif points at the bottom. See these, these are what make it look nice. Now, the angle of the first and the last stroke is roughly the same angle as your pen and it takes a bit of getting used to so just keep practicing with this line here because this is the main component of gothic lettering and once you've got this down then you're going to get everything else down as well now thickness of your pen what you want to do is we can work out the thickness by drawing some lines like this or some like diamonds and i like to fit for me personally for my style of calligraphy i like to fit about two or three inside of where i'm working and that determines the thickness of what you should be working at. So technically speaking, I should be working at about, if I do five, which is the technical term, I should be working like this. This is the thickness that we want to be at roughly. If you want to be a bit more modern, do two or three. Okay, so now we have the eyes. Now, the great thing about the eyes is that we can create other things with it. So if I wanted to create an L, we could create an L by just going like from the top without that thing and then down. Um, it's very important to stay quite straight. It's kind of hard to do sometimes, but just go straight down. Now I want to create an N. So what do I do? I create an I, because the I part is the first part of the N. 
then I'm going to basically do the same. But instead of like going straight down like this again, I'm actually going to come up a little bit and have this sort of connector line, then do the same image across. Now, what if we want to do an M? Well, we just repeat the same bit here like so we've got an m so you can start to see that we're getting components in here now the tricky ones are the a's but it is exactly the same and i promise you it's crazy for an o we just go like this i'm going to scale out a little bit we're going to start just below the x height which is this line here we're going to go down and do the same thing there but we're not going to create the first start of it we're just going to go straight down and then like so then what we're going to do is flip it and reverse it so we're going to come out then down so we can do it like this that is an o very minimal o if we wanted to do an a it's the same start but we do the whole of the last stroke so for instance this is the component a if we want to do a d we could do the same thing but what we're going to do instead is we're going to create that first line and then we're going to come around like so boom d that creates the d a G, again, the same thing. You're starting to build the picture here. Just come straight down. You can create some cool stuff there, like so. That's not a very good example. Now, the best way to work out whether your Gothic calligraphy is working well enough is to do a consistency check. Now, lettering is all about consistency. Calligraphy is about consistency too, and it's hard to master. Well, what you can do is instead of like randomly drawing words, we are going to write the word minimum because they have the same components and letters. So it will look really nice and consistent. So here's me writing minimum. I'm going to try and be as consistent as I possibly can. So the way that I'm angling my paper here is that I can draw straight down easily. You can see how I'm working within the lines. This isn't going to be perfect because of the angle that I'm sat at for the camera. But the main thing is we want to keep as straight as possible with these lines. And boom, there we go. We've got the word minimum there. And what you should see is that it looks pretty consistent all the way throughout. The tops are all consistent. The thickness, the angles are pretty consistent all the way throughout. Okay, so going into Vectinator, and I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor, which is Vectinator. Now, they've just released, or are about to release, a really cool new feature inside it where you can actually edit brushes. So before, it was just like a blob brush tool, but now we've got like an actual featured brush tool. So by that, that. I mean, we can go into the brushes, go into style, and we've got some brushes down here. So you see this? We've got an editor. We're going to go into this editor and have a look. Now you can see we've got some preset brushes here and we can have a look. They're even like pressure sensitive too, which is pretty nice. But what we can do actually is we can edit brushes. So we can go into the brush editor here and we can see the shape and we can actually manipulate it like so. We can manipulate it to however we want. Now, for what we're doing today, we're going to be creating the brush that we just made inside of this. So what I would do, for instance, is go to your brush editor. We've got one like this, but yours will be kind of like just a circle. You want to go ahead and bring the roundness down. And we're going to change the angle to around 45 degrees, if you can get it. And there you go. Boom, you've got your brush. Now, obviously this is vector, so it's gonna act a little bit different. So things that, mistakes that you make are gonna be kind of accentuated, but don't worry, because we can change that. So what I'm gonna do is create the word light in a really cool way. And this is something that I love to do, uh, not particularly for logos, but for any sort of lettering, it's quite fun. And you'll see me undoing and redoing a lot of the time because I want to make sure it's correct and it's part of my habit. It's kind of difficult to get correct every time. But what we're looking for is a nice composition here. So what I'm going to do is create that L a little bit less. So we've got an L. I'm going to bring an I in here, then a G. And this G, I'm going to like repeat what we just did. I'm going to map it here. So we've got a G there. So obviously it's vector and we can change this afterwards, which is really nice. With the Procreate one, you can change it slightly afterwards, but not too much. With this, we have ultimate control at the end and we're just getting like the sketch down. Boom. Right, we've got the word light. So that's pretty cool. And these guides have just helped me. I just picked them up on the side there. So now that we've got this, you can see that it's actually in paths. So they haven't been outlined, although you can go and outline them by going to path and then down to 
outline like so if you want i'm going to edit them slightly so we're going to go to the node tool and we're going to start to like make these slightly better i'm going to highlight this i'm just going to start double tapping on some of these because we don't need some of them to be so pulley in the handles there you can see how easy this is actually going to be take this double tap double tap move this and you can see we can actually go in great detail to edit them and all we do is basically go around this, just double tap, just making sure that we get them nice. What we don't want to do is make it look too perfect. If you want to get that hand lettered look, you want it to look a bit human. But when we double tap it, it sort of takes the handles away. When we re-tap them, it brings them back perfectly. Then afterwards, we can outline it. Okay, so now we have this, and this is the one that I like the most. I'm going to go ahead and highlight them all. Go to path, press outline. It's going to outline all the strokes and it's going to merge them all together as well, like so. Now we have whatever we need right here in complete vector format. And you can do whatever you need to do now to it. You could go ahead, create a shadow if you want. You can use it as a logo or some album artwork cover. But that's just a very basic way of doing it. So I hope that helped you. If you're new to Gothic lettering, it's a really fun thing to do, especially if you're using it in the traditional method with a parallel pen or again with those two pencils sort of stuck together if you did enjoy the video remember to like share and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next week's video see you soon goodbye